Welcome to the Advanced Date Time Seminar brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's seminar is going to cover a bunch of advanced techniques that have to do with dealing with dates and times. These are a lot of questions that I got asked during my normal Access Expert classes, levels 27 and 28, where I covered the date time functions. But all of these techniques require at least a little bit of programming. And in my Access Expert series, I'm trying to avoid using VBA programming. So I decided to put all this together in a seminar for you. We're going to cover popular topics such as calculate the number of work days between two dates. For example, give me January 5th and February 5th. I want to know how many Monday through Friday days there are in there. And I'll show you how to exclude holidays by making a holiday table. We'll learn how to date time stamp edited records. It's very easy to figure out when a record is created, but what if you want to know when that record was edited? I'll show you how to time stamp it as soon as it's edited. Lots of people want to know how to generate pop-up reminder notifications in Access. So you can be working on something and then all of a sudden your database will go, oh, you have a reminder, you have to make a phone call in five minutes. Those are pop-up reminders. I'll show you how to figure out how many Mondays are in January, or how many Tuesdays are in February, or how many Thursdays are in the third quarter. We'll do all kinds of different calculations like that that involve counting the number of a particular type of day between two date ranges. We'll learn how to calculate holiday dates. Give me a year, and I'll tell you what day the easy ones fall on, like Christmas or New Year's Day. Those are simple. The more complicated ones such as Martin Luther King Day or Thanksgiving Day. And we'll even see how to calculate the really crazy ones, like Easter Sunday has a very complicated formula. We'll take a look at that later. And finally, a popular request, we'll see how to create recurring appointments. We'll make a list of appointments or reminders in our database. We'll set a frequency, such as I want to do this every three days or every two weeks. When we mark it done, the database will automatically advance it that far into the future. So lots of different cool techniques today, and again, all of these involve a little bit of programming, but that's okay. Don't worry if you've never done any programming before. I'll show you everything you need to know step by step. Again, I mentioned the prerequisites earlier, Access Expert 27 and 28. I strongly recommend before taking this class, you have taken my complete beginner series in Access and all of my expert classes, levels 1 through 28. In 27, I cover the basic date time functions, date time now, teach you about date mathematics, and we'll build a simple accounts receivable with date aging in it, so I can say, show me all the orders that are 30 days past due, 60 days past due, and so on. Then in expert 28, we go through all of the date time functions in detail, the more advanced ones, day, month, year, hour, minute, second, weekday, weekday name, month name, date add for adding dates, date diff for calculating the difference between two dates, Date serial, date part, date value, time value, and convert date. A helpful but not required prerequisite is my Access SQL Seminar Part 1. When we build our reminder pop-up form, I'm going to use a little tiny bit of SQL in there to dynamically recreate the form and to show some data on there in different ways. It'll be helpful if you've taken the SQL Seminar first, but not required. Again, I'll show you everything you need to know today. But if you want to learn more about SQL, I recommend taking that first before this one. This seminar was recorded with Access 2013. I'm pretty sure everything that I covered will work in 2010 and 2007 as well. Most of the VBA, if not all of the VBA, will work with 2003 and earlier. But the lessons that talk about embedded macros, for example, the timestamp, will not work. You'll have to use the VBA code lesson for that. My courses are broken up into beginner, expert, advanced, and developer level classes. Beginner level classes are for novices. You should understand all the topics covered in them by the time you get to the expert level classes, which you're in now. When you finish all of the expert level classes, the advanced classes will cover event programming and macros, and the developer classes will cover Visual Basic for applications. Each group of classes is broken down into multiple levels, level 1, 2, 3, and so on. In addition to my normal access classes, I also have seminars designed to teach specific topics. Some of my seminars include building web-based databases, 
creating forms and reports that look like calendars, securing your database, working with images and attachments, writing work orders and running a service business, tracking accounts payable, learning the SQL programming language, creating loan amortization schedules, and lots more. You can find details on all of these seminars and more on my website at accesslearningzone.com. If you have questions about the topics covered in today's lessons, please feel free to post them in my student forums. If you're watching this course in the online theater on my website, you should see the student forum for each lesson appear in a small window next to the class video. Here, you will see all of the questions that other students have asked, as well as my responses to them and comments that other students have made. I encourage you to read through these questions and answers as you start each lesson, and feel free to join in the discussion. If you are not watching these lessons on my website, you can still visit the student forums later by visiting accesslearningzone.com slash forums. To get the most out of this course, I recommend you sit back, relax, and watch each lesson completely through once without trying to do anything on your computer. Then, replay the lesson from the beginning and follow along with my examples. Actually create the same database that I make in the video step by step. Don't try to apply what you're learning right now to other projects until you've mastered the sample database from class. If you get stuck or don't understand something, watch the video again from the beginning or tell me what's wrong in the student forum and I'll do my best to help you. Most importantly, keep an open mind. Access may seem intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll see that it's real easy to use. Now I strongly encourage you to build the database that I build in today's class by following along with the videos. However, if you would like to download a sample copy of my finished database file, you can find it on my website at accesslearningzone.com slash databases. Sometimes if you get stuck, the easiest way to learn is to tear apart someone else's database. One of the ways that I taught myself access years ago was by tearing apart the Northwind Traders database that comes with Microsoft Access. You'll find there's a sample database for each of my courses on my website. Now let's take a few minutes and go over exactly what we're going to cover in today's class. One of the most popular questions I get with Microsoft Access when it comes to date time functions is how do I replicate the network days function from Microsoft Excel? Network days in Excel allows you to enter two dates and it will return the number of work days, Monday through Friday, plus an optional list of holiday dates, and it will tell you how many work days are in that range. Access does not have that functionality. So in lessons one, two, and three, I'm going to show you how to build something like that in Microsoft Access. In lesson two, we're continuing on with the work days function. Lesson three concludes the three lessons on the network days function. When this lesson is finished, we'll not only have a function that mimics the network days function of Excel, where you can count the number of work days between two dates, but we'll also build our own is workday function where we can check any single specific date to see if that date is a workday, whether it's a Monday through Friday or it's on our holiday list of excluded dates and so on. In lesson four, we're going to learn how to timestamp records when they're edited. So when someone makes a change to a record, either in the table or the form, we'll set a last updated field equal to the current date and time. In the next couple of lessons, we're going to learn how to make event pop-up notifications. We'll make a list of reminders, what the notification date and time is, and then we'll make a form that will pop up automatically and say, hey, you've got a reminder for five minutes from now. In lesson five, we'll begin by learning how to program the on-timer event. In lesson six, we're continuing with the reminder pop-up notifications. This is part two. We'll build an actual reminder pop-up form. In lesson seven, we're continuing with our reminder pop-up notifications. This is part three. We'll work on the remind me button, so you can say remind me in five minutes, in ten minutes, and the move the reminder buttons to move it to tomorrow, next week, and so on. In lesson eight, I'm going to show you how to calculate how many X days 
in a particular interval. Now, by X day, I mean a specific day of the week. For example, how many Wednesdays are in this month? How many Thursdays are in next quarter? This is an example that I didn't cover in Access Expert 28 because it involves some programming, so I saved it for this seminar. In Lesson 9, we're going to learn how to calculate holiday dates. We'll start off with some easy ones like U.S. Independence Day and Christmas Day. Then we'll get into some more complex ones like President's Day, the third Monday of February, or Labor Day, the first Monday of September. Then we'll get into some really crazy stuff like how to calculate Easter Sunday. In Lesson 10, we're going to take our reminders form that we created in an earlier lesson. We're going to set it so that each of our reminders can be recurring. So I can say, when I click the Done button, move this ahead three days or two weeks or four months or whatever. This is good for reminders to pay bills or to check your YouTube channel or any kind of regular recurring reminders you have. We'll also make buttons so we can advance through Show Me This Week, Last Week, the week after that, and so on. In Lesson 11, we are continuing with our recurring appointments form. In Lesson 12, I'll show you just a real short function that I wrote a while back to display ordinal dates. That's 1st, 5th, 7th, 31st, and so on.